Hi everybody, I am going to walk you through accessibility, building a quiz. I think it's really important. Um, and so let's go. All right, so this is practice. Accessibility quiz, learn accessibility by building a quiz by Free Code Camp. All right, so the first part, as always, start this accessibility journey by providing a language attribute to your HTML. That is a big deal for both um, HTML and accessibility. I'm sorry, what I meant to say was um, not HTML, but uh, SEO and accessibility. The browser wants to know what language it should be. So we got the meta element, okay? So we got keywords, title, description. We're gonna do another meta element. Obviously, we do our meta. Okay, I feel like I'm in VS Code. I always think that I can, um... okay, sorry. Uh, char set equals UT eight dash. I think I can just go from there, right? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. I know, it's annoying. Ask me later. Okay, next, we got to do our viewport. Guys, I'm cheating, okay? Like, let's, let's go. Let's go into my, oops, just playing with code pen. Okay, let's go in here. Go to my head. Uh, it wants me to have all this, this guy, okay, there we go, oops, again, mm -hmm. okay, check, great, control enter. Another important meta element for accessibility and SEO, which is search engine optimization, is the description definition. The value of the content attribute is used by search engines to provide a description of your page at a meta element with the name attribute set to description and then content. Okay, so I'm going to do that right before the title. I'm going to do meta description, or no, okay, name equals, so I'm naming, what is this? What is this meta? It's uh, like here, it was a viewport. Here, it's a description. Okay, that's the value of my attribute, description, good. And then I have content which is, right, we had content here, is going to be equal to a useful content attribute. So, uh, wait, oops, I don't know what I just did. Um, learn, learn accessibility quiz, all right. Yay, moving on. Lastly, for screen readers, we have to have the title element. All right. I always do that before the link. Uh, let's see. Title. And it is. It's not a self closing. The rest of these are void elements. Void elements are self closing, they don't need a closing tag. Okay, so again, um, I'll learn, oh, this one's a free code camp accessibility quiz practice project. Yeah, that's true. Um, learn, access, uh, oops, access. Practice, wow, project. Okay, cool. It's going to change it. It's always funny. Accessibility quiz. Perfect. Okay. So navigation is a core part of accessibility. So we want to have a header and a main element. So these are two semantic elements that are very common um, that basically every page should have. We haven't done it yet. And this is great. So this is a semantic element. Um, now the main never goes inside the header. The header 
doesn't usually go inside the main. They are separate. The header starts first, and it's not to be confused with the head. The header is something you actually see. It's kind of like the head. It's so weird because I wish they would have said like the mind or called the whole dang thing the head, like called it meta or something, you know, um, because it's hard when it says the head, we're like, oh, that means I can see it. It's the head. No, it's the header that can be seen. All right. And then let's see, it introduces and provides navigation and the core content. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So within the header, I'm going to have um, an image, H1, and navigation. Okay. So my image tag, I'm going to have an SRC equals quote, and then I'm going to have an ID equals logo. Really should have alt text. I'm sure that it's going to make me do that in a minute because that is like prime. Oh, look at that. It's huge. And then it points to that. Okay, good. Probably change it later. I got an image and I want my H1. Notice I'm not worried about putting the trailing slash, you know, like a white space and slash, but um, it does this for void elements itself. Uh, and the only reason why it might be good to have that is because of XML. Like if you wanted to turn your code from HTML to XML. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. H1 is going to be HTML forward slash CSS quiz. Perfect. And then nav. Okay, so we always have the navigation in the header. This is one of those things that's going to be like our entire page. Our all our entire website is going to have this header. Okay. So we just want to think about it like that. Okay. And this is kind of the standard. The one thing that will change on every single page of our website is the H1. Okay. But usually the logo and the navigation will not change. That's it. Perfect. Okay, so a useful property of an SVG is that it contains a path attribute, which allows the image to be scaled without affecting. Oh, cool. So that sounds great. Path. Ah, you notice this says max, and then it has um, parentheses. Do you guys remember what that means? That means it's a function. Okay, good. That's That's all I wanted to say. All right, so we already have some body. They just set us some body, zero margin, all that good stuff. Now I'm gonna do a path attribute. Currently the image is assuming it's a default size, which is too large. Correctly scale the image using its ID. So rather than scaling all of the images on the page, which would be weird, we're gonna scale just the logo. And that makes sense. And the ID, we're not gonna have logo anywhere else on the page not this logo okay but it could be on every single one of our pages and remember ids can only be one per page the hashtag is the thing for id Ooh, look at how small it is up there. I can barely even see it anymore. All right. Okay. Make sure I put my, yay. Let's see. So as described in the Free Code Camp style guide, oh, that looks handy. You might want to open that somewhere. Look at that. Ooh, style guide. Oh, this is there. We got, we, you, uh, if, if, Okay, so if we weren't just learning HTML and CSS, we would really get into this um, this style guide. You do need to understand what a style guide is. It's basically a brand, branding, and all that good stuff. All right, so the logo should retain the aspect of 35 over 4. Oh, okay, so yeah, that makes sense. And have padding around the text. First, change the background color to A. So you can see the logo. Okay. I'm going to copy this. I'm so cheating. 
And obviously it's not going to do anything, but I can just go like this and then I can put a little thing in there. Oh, look at that. It's black. And then I need some padding and my padding is, whoops. Okay. Hold on. It asked me to do this first. Aspect ratio 35, four. I'm putting spaces in because that's what it has. Um, so. 35 by 4. Padding is going to be 0 0.4 REM. Ah, there we go. So that's the logo for Free Co Camp. Okay. All right. Good job. All right. Make the header. Take up the full width of the parent container. Okay. So the reason why we're going to use a flex box is that it's going to go all the way across. So we're going to take the header, take up the full width and set its height. So header, it's the element type selector, header, right? Um, every single header that's on a page, which there should never be more than one header on a page, only one. Okay. But if there were, they would all be set to take up the full width of its parent container. So width is inherit. And then they might mean 100%, but I'm pretty sure it should be inherit. And then height. I might just be going off script, and that's fine. We'll get there. And then, look, okay, cheating. Background colored this. Mm -hmm. And then. Yeah, that inherit worked. Um, but it might it might change it and then display. Flex. It's not flex box. To use flex box, it's not flex box. It's just flex, okay? Just remember that. Ah, it doesn't like it. It doesn't like the inherit, whatever. I thought inherit was clever, but they didn't. It's the same. Okay, anyways, also header is a block element, meaning that it's always going to take up 100%. Anyways, so, um, or really it's just going to take up whatever is there. So, um, like it wasn't, when we gave it a background color, it didn't have anything but 100%. So, anywho there, let's check this out. Yay. Okay. Now, change the H1. Okay. H1, so all H1s on the page, which there should never be any more than one H1 on the page. Every other topic on the page should be H2. Okay. <laughs> all right. So color, it's like the one thing where it's like color instead of font color, background color. So color is always, it's like the first thing that anybody ever did with CSS or something. Wow. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm getting a little loopy. So many videos. Min function, make a function. So I'll open up my parentheses V W comma 1.2 EM. Oh, interesting. So oh yeah, that's super interesting. So the minimum now is going to be five vertical width and 1.2 em height so the minimum but those are like the minimum values that they could have that's super interesting uh, uh, i see that goes off the page okay okay so because of that min width it goes off the page all right check it great Doing great. Okay, so now in our navigation. So we have to have navigation, so you guys. And so that's actually one of the things that we're going to be doing with the trivia page um, is we'll be adding, when you do that project, we'll be adding a navigation to it after. So to enable navigation on the page, we're going to add an unordered list with the following three list items. All right. The list items text should be wrapped in anchor tags. Ooh, so fancy proud of you guys for knowing this. Okay. You're like, I don't know anything. No, it's just fine too. Okay. So UL unordered list. 
Okay. And then Li. And okay. Um and my Li. Um, let's see. Li and whatever. And my Li. Put my HTML in there. In there. Mm -hmm. And I know, I think it's probably amusing that I do different things every single time. Maybe I just want to keep it fresh. All right. So they need to be contained. So what it says is to enable navigation, add an unordered list. And then these list text items should be wrapped in anchor links. All right. So um, why would you do that? Well, there's going to be places on the page where we can get to the info, the HTML, and the CSS. All right, so let's see. Info. Uh, let's wrap it. A. href equals cash out. Is that? Meh. I have to remember it, guys. I forget. I didn't do the rest of the projects yet. I want to make sure. I'm supposed to act like. <laughs> Close that. Isn't it nice how it colors for you? You got to. You still got to be aware. Like you're like, mm, pay attention when it changes colors. You know, you're like, oh, it changed colors. Like that, sh that should be a key indicator that there's an issue. So I'm just going to let it give me a hint because I th I'm pretty, I, I might, I'm probably wrong. Let's see. Oh, nope. I'm right. Yay. Okay. So we're like, what? Like hashtag. Well, we have to fill those in, but they're going to be headings. They're going to be H2 elements on the page. Very cool. All right. And it'll be, they'll have IDs info html css and i'll link back it'll be awesome all right control enter so target the unordered list with the navigation elements and use flexbox to evenly space the children <laughs> i don't know why that that cracks me up okay so target unordered list elements within the nav so nav containing combinator containing UL, curly braces, display, flex. Whoop, whoop. I can't see anything. Oh, I didn't do it. Oh, shoot. I don't like this one. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay. Target unordered list within the nav element. So you got to do this one. So it's like navigation with all the unordered lists. All right, there we go. I think it probably could be either, but that's okay. All right, oops. Oh, okay. To evenly space the children. I don't know, that cracks me up. Okay, so justify content. Uh, guys. There is an awesome, uh, there's a really awesome page out there about all of this that I'll have to send to you. Okay, control enter. Yay, keep going. All right. So as this is a quiz, you will need a form. Sure. You can semantically separate the content within the form using section elements. So here we go. Semantics. So it's pieces of the of the page. Right now we're using so many more. It's great. This is a this is a real structure. Header. Within the header there's a navigation, there's H1 and a navigation. Outside the header is main. Inside the main are sections. This is great. So inside the main, we are going to have a section. 
we're going to have three nested sections, three nested section elements. Okay, each form. Okay, so hold on. So it's also telling me I have to do a form. Okay. And then, so it's saying that I have a form here and it here in form. Cool. Highlight this, tab it over, perfect. Within the main, create a form, three nested section elements, make the form submit. Okay, so action uh, method equals submit, or is it post? Action equals, it might be post, like, wow. Uh, Whatever. I forget sometimes. Guys, I still have to, like, it's not like I'm always writing code. Like, you're not always writing code. Um, when you're a web developer, you're often, like, troubleshooting and all that good stuff. So, it's method post. Okay. I said that. I just didn't do it right. I'm sure. How many of you did this, too? I'm sure lots of you. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, this is right. Okay, control, enter. Great. Okay, so. Oh, now I know. Okay, somebody, somebody had uh, given to me. They did an input. They did like a um, an input of a submit, and then they tried to put the action here. I think that might have been their problem now is that they thought they had to have a separate submit and really what they were saying is you needed the method post that's confusing to increase the page accessibility the role attribute can be used to indicate the purpose behind an element on the page to assistive technologies right so we're like okay the role is a part of the web access the wi ai and accepts present values Preset, sorry, not present. So the section, it's actually saying, well, what are these sections? Well, role equals, it's an attribute, region. So this is a region on the page. What I don't understand is why section, when it automatically, I mean, that's kind of the point of semantic HTML is that the, uh, the elements are describing themselves or self description. Like if I was going to give it a role, then like of region, then why don't I just use a divider? I don't know. So anyways, I guess this, this works too. Um, enter. Yay. Okay. Every region also requires a label. Well, that's not a bad idea. So it's not just a label. Um, one, method for adding a label is to add a heading element inside the region and then reference it with aria labeled by attribute Ooh, okay add the following aria label by attributes to the section elements okay aria dash labeled by oh man guys i can see myself not adding double l's there in the future Oof, be careful equals student info and i'm gonna copy this put it in here and then i'm gonna say html questions copy this sucker come on less typing the better paste it Take it, copy, paste it. You guys notice that I'm never right clicking? Stop right clicking. If you're right clicking, cut it out. Mm, grown, you're a grown designer, computer user. Use keyboard shortcuts. Command C for copy, Control C for copy, Command V for paste, C Control V for paste. Thank you to save command S control S. Okay. I will go back to continue this then with each, uh, nest one H two with the matching corresponding already labeled by attribute. Give each H two suitable text. Ooh. Okay. 
Giving me some freedom here. H2. I'm going to open it and close it first. <sighs> hmm. First, it's an ID. ID equals doop. student info. Hmm. This should be student information. That makes sense. Not info. That's not very professional of us. Take this sucker, copy it, enter, paste it, uh, HTML questions, copy it, pseudonym, paste it, uh, whatever, I don't know. And then take this whole thing, copy it. Go here, enter, paste it. CSS questions. Oh, CSS questions. Questions on CSS. Sweet. Yay, I did it right. Oh, they're like student info, HTML, CSS. I feel like mine was much more descriptive. Typeface plays an important role in the accessibility of a page. Some fonts are easier to read. Okay, change the font. Always, guys, don't use stinky. Uh, okay, well, first, we did font family Helvetica, and this that's a great font. I'm not sure why we're changing it some more. Verdana, yeah, it's actually even more, um, and that's like research-based. So H1, H2, open up, and font family is Verdana. And use okay. Um, font Verdana Ariel uh, Sans Serif. Cool. So it's gonna work for Verdana, and if that's not available, it's gonna use Aria, and if that's not available, it's gonna use Sans Serif. And then those are just the easy ones I know. Ariel, and you know, uh, I probably could have done. What's the other one? Um, open Sans. Yeah. Uh, same thing. Verdana, Open Sans, Sans Serif, something like that. Also, add a border bottom. Again, you guys know, if you've watched one of my videos before, you might know that border bottom is one of my favorite things to say. I could have copied that one, but I'm too interested in saying border bottom. I don't know. It sounds like it could be like, like a hip hop song. And, um, okay. Um, it says just to the H2. Okay. So hold on. Um, I'm sorry though. I'm not gonna, like, it was tempting there to sing my own song, but I decided not to. Cool. All right. So also add a border bottom of four pixels solid da, 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 to H2 elements to make the sections distinct. Guys, H2 elements are also, um, they are block, block elements. So like you have two H2 elements that are going to be on separate lines. And so when you give it a border bottom, you don't have to define the space because it automatically takes up a hundred percent of the page. Okay, we keep going. To be able to navigate within the page, give each anchor element an href corresponding to the ID of the H2. The ID of the H2s. Okay, so the IDs of the H2s. That's what I sound like a... Okay, so I got this one, student info. Okay, A. href. I already did that, remember? Yeah. Okay, so notice here, guys, um, how cool is it that it's hashtag? So the href is hashtag. And the hashtag we know already as, oh, that's what I put in the CSS as an ID. Remember that? Okay. This is, um, I'm just going to type up here, HTML dash questions. CSS dash questions. Sometimes it's just easier. I did it. Yay. All right. Uh, so that's so cool. Watch. Boom. 
Boom. It doesn't actually like go anywhere <laughs> because we don't have a lot of content, but it will when we have more content. So now below student info, add three dividers with a class of info. Whew. Well, so now, now, okay. So now we're using info. Okay. Div class equals quote unquote info. Okay, end it, end the diff, boom. Okay, uh, add three, then within each div, nest one label element and one input. Oh, hold on, no, I'm gonna do that first, y'all, because I'm just gonna copy all of this, that's crazy. I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna retype label input. Okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say to nest the input into the label, so I'll just do it like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, all three. Add three of them. Well, these are like our quiz questions. Control C or Command C. Oops. And the diff. Command V. Command V. All right. Or. Whoop, whoop. I did it. Yay. Okay. Um, whew. Step 20. It's important to link each input to the corresponding label. Right. So we've got a label. We got an input. So it has to be label four and the ID of input. So input needs some IDs. This section will take a student's name, email address, and the date of birth. Give the label elements appropriate for and link them. Okay. So for equals name, I'm keeping it simple, ID equals name, then link the input, oh, so the, okay, hold on, for attribute, with the, 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 okay, give the label as well as text content, okay, text content to, and then link the input to the corresponding. Okay, got it. Okay, so student name, class label four. Okay, four equals email. Email. Nope. Guys, never, ever, 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 ever. Don't uppercase stuff. Don't use uppercase unless you're using camel case, which means you start with a lowercase and then other uh, letters could be uppercase. Okay, this one, uh, student email. Okay, finally, all right, four. And this is um, DOB. Um, let's do ID equals DOB. I'm not sure if it'll, uh, oh, I didn't do that here. ID equals email. Dip the loo for name, ID name for email, ID email. Da -da -da, for DOB. Oh, look at that. See, the red helps me again. I'm like, wait, that's not supposed to be red. Good. Okay, let's see. Does it like it? Yeah, it's good with it. It did all this. It did the, oh, that's weird. Okay, guys, this is weird. This is weird that it would put in DOB. That's actually not accessible to put in, uh, like, to put in um, abbreviations to assume. That's not universal design. You never assume that somebody would know what a DOB is. You just don't. Even though we all do, some people don't. You never know. All right, so that's universal design anyways. Keeping in mind best practices for form inputs, give each input an appropriate type and name. Then give the first input a placeholder attribute. Okay, whew, this is, this, is, this is hard stuff, huh? Okay, so appropriate type and name. Input, input, input. Oh, I, wish, I wish I was in VS Code sometimes. All right, let's see, input. Give each input an appropriate type and name. Input. Okay. ID. 
I'm going to press enter. Okay, input type equals text. Uh, name equals student email. All right. Placeholder attribute, okay. It doesn't say to do anything, so I'll leave it like that for now, but we'll see what happens. So label for birth date, DOB, it's driving me crazy, which is fine. I can be driven crazy. Da, da, da. All right. Type equals text. Is that true? Hmm. The email should not be, oh shoot guys, I'm doing something wrong. Placeholder. I didn't go up to the top. Ah, poo. Hold on. Okay, hold on. I did it wrong. Yay. ID, student name. Placeholder, sure. Uh, I know. And type equals text. And name equals student name. Yeah. Okay. You guys need to take breaks if it starts getting cumbersome. Well, I mean, it's always going to be cumbersome. Student email, student email, student email. It's, let me just do the name. Okay. That's what it's always going to be. Um, and this actually helps the server to process. Okay. Um, if we type date of birth, can I do a type? Yeah, I could do type date. That's right. Okay. So type equals date. Name equals birth. I don't know why they didn't say birth date in the label. I get really stuck on things sometimes. <laughs> no, it didn't work. It should give the first input a placeholder. I did. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> ah, Joe Johnson. I don't know. Okay. Um, I did, dude. Okay. Check it. Yay, I did it. Okay, so it just, it wanted me to put in a placeholder. Looking great. It's going to change it now. Yeah, there we go. For example, oh, you know what? I like the EG part. I should have put that. Quincy Larson. It's a cool name. Quincy. Uh, even though you added a placeholder to the first input in the previous, this is actually not a practice for accessibility. Too often, users confuse the placeholder text with an actual input value. Truth! They think there is already an input value in the input. Yeah, totally. That's, I agree. Remove the placeholder text, relying on the label being a best practice. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That is true. So we don't actually use placeholders. Arguably, oh, Finally, geez, one way to get around is uh, without having to add visual is to add text only. So append a span element ooh, with a class of SR only to the current text content of the third label. Oh, interesting. <sighs> that is really interesting. Okay, so span. Uh, class equals SR only. So that's going to be something that we code. And to end the span, or uh, so we end the initial tag and span. I never want to put it outside, okay? Keep it, keep it all inside. It's nested, okay? If you take the span out of the nest, it's going to fall or something. I don't know. Oh, I didn't do it. The text content. Oh, after? Hmm. Is it empty? Oh, I know what they're I know what they're doing here. Uh-huh. So in here it's gonna actually put date of birth. But we're not doing it yet. Okay. I got you. 
Okay, now we put date of birth. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. Cool. The SR only text is still visible. So, oh, absolute. Oh, there's a common pattern to visually hide text for only screen readers to read. This pattern is set to the following CSS properties. Position, absolute, width, one pixel, height, one pixel, padding, zero, margin, negative one, overflow, hidden, clip, rectangle, zero, 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 white space, no wrap, border, zero. Wow, that is fancy. So this is one of those things, guys, if, um, since this is a specific pattern, like I thought we would just do hidden, but display hidden, but whatever. Um, I guess not. I guess that would make it so that the screen reader can, oh, it would, it would, okay. Display hidden would make it so even the screen reader wouldn't read it. All right. Um, so let's do a class as a dot, SR only. And since it's like a pattern that we use in all, we probably will have to use it more than once, potentially. So there we go. I, I, I still want to put DOB even for people that are not visually impaired. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Um, there it is. Check it. Great. Interesting. Okay. So now the screen reader is going to say that. Within the second section element, add two divider elements with a class question block. H2, second section, under H2, obviously. Mm -hmm. Then H div dot, hey, look at this guys. Div dot question block. This is a combinator. So it's saying the divider with the class of question block. If it was an ID, it would have a hashtag. Okay. This is a very common, very, very common. Okay, I'm gonna just copy it, cause why not? And just sit in there, div. Instead of this, I'm gonna put class equals, put a quotation mark there, put a quotation mark there, end it, end my div. Cool, all right. Add one P element with text incrementing numbers starting at, mm, one and one field set element with a class of question oh my goodness that's a lot huh are you guys confused by that yeah text of incrementing numbers okay oh i have to look at the hint on this one guys okay so a p element text of incrementing numbers. I don't know. Does that mean I put one? I'm not, I'm not doing this right. Uh -uh, I'm not. Okay. So that's fine. Uh, field set. Class equals question. Oof. All right. Okay. Hold on. Div. Okay. So all of this is in my div. Two div elements with a class of question blog. Add one P text incrementing with text of incrementing numbers. Uh, can I do that in HTML? I don't understand. Like, is there an HTML? No, I don't understand. It's like a interesting. Hmm. Okay, so we have like a counter increment. That sounds kind of extra. Whoops, sorry. Okay, that sounds a little extra. Okay, let's. Oh my goodness, where am I? Oh no. A little extra. Okay, well, 
All right, I'm just gonna do this for now. That's so interesting. Starting at one and one field set. Okay. So, you know what? I think it's, I think that I'm just over confusing this. And you guys, if you've already done this, you're probably like, yeah, yeah. So over this one, one, and I'm gonna say two. Okay. No, okay, good. All right, element text of one. Okay, no period. Get rid of that period. Okay. There we go, no periods. Okay, makes sense. Each field set will contain a true false question within each field set nest one legend and one UL element with two options. Woo! All right, here's my field set. Enter, I'm gonna nest a legend. Guys, we are, notice we're building, we're building our structure first. The only reason why we're doing CSS, look at how much CSS we've done so far. It's not much, really, it's um, kind of, I don't know, it's like overall right now, okay? So, anyways, all right. Um, okay, legend, and then one UL element with two options. UL, uh, uh, LI, LI, oh, I know what we're gonna do. Well, maybe I don't. But we'll see. I think it, we're going to put radio buttons in there, inputs. Let's see. And then I'll turn it into like circles. Hmm. And this UL. Okay, great. Take all right here. Okay, question. Copy it. Put it here. Cool. Okay, I did it, yay. All right, let's see. Give each field set an adequate name label. But I don't understand what, I don't know, I don't know. What is the field set, HTML questions? HTML questions. Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. So class question, uh, name equals HTML questions. We'll see if that works. Name, I'll get there in a second. Let me see. Um, Mm, go down here, All right. space V, cool. Okay, good. And then, unordered list class of answers list. Okay, let's just copy all this. Control C, that's it. They give both unordered lists, unordered lists. Awesome. I'm copying it and pasting it in the next one. All right. Finally, use the legend to caption the content of the field set by placing a true false question as the text concept. Uh huh. By placing a true false question as the text content. true false question do we actually want to like call it a question I'm so confused oh look at that oops okay see you see this oh i got something extra over here hmm. after two 
Boop, 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 boop. There it is. Uh, answers list, legend, 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 legend. I don't know. Is this what they're asking? Is this what you're asking? No. Okay. Sorry, your code doesn't pass. Don't give up. Should not use the same. Okay, so it's literally asking me to do a true false question. Okay. So, um, uh, semantic semantic elements are not needed for HTML. True or false? Dun, dun, dun. False. Good. Good job. <laughs> um, HTML like um, HTML provides the structure of a web page. True. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. It really wanted me to do that. Okay. So they're, oh, they're making it much more fancy. The legend element represents a caption for the content of its parent field set element. True. Legend is part of it. Legend is an instant. Uh, it's interesting because it's the legend, I believe, that creates the border. So it's, um, it's the nest that's like, you know, field sets the nest, but it's like a nest that you don't see. And it is a block, a, it's a block element. And then, um, the legend inside is a block element, right? And then whatever inside could be inline or block or whatever. Okay, so we need like input types of radio buttons, but for right now it's telling us to provide functionality of the two false questions. We need a set of inputs which do not allow both to be selected at the same time. Radio buttons within each list element nest one label element and within each label element with the appropriate type. Okay, cool. I remember this. Um, but I gotta do it in within each... Uh, list element. Okay. Here in the list, it's going to be label input type equals radio This is it. Yeah. So look at that, guys. I have nested a label, which also has an input nested, okay, within the list element. All right, let's take this, paste it. Great, 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 great. Uh, do the same thing for the next one. Okay. I hope I'm right. Otherwise, I'll have to type a bunch more. If you guys know I'm wrong, it would suck, right? Yay, I did it. Awesome. Okay. Woo. You like this? I love it. it. It's stupid how much I like it. Oh, look at that. So it's interesting because this is, you know how, okay, our survey form and um, we, instead of using... I kept thinking this, so uh, we can always use unordered lists and we can make them fancy and we basically do list style type none so that the the bullet points don't show, but it's like a super easy way to list things rather than saying, okay, all of these have to be block, a display of block. We can do it in the HTML, which then gives us more, I, I don't know, I guess it gives us more control over our CSS when we get to that, um, but yeah, anything like you don't want to style in the HTML, but layout, right? Layout's definitely in the HTML. So rather than having to change the display property in CSS, we use an unordered list. We do that for the navigation and we do that for the, um, we do that for the navigation and we do that for the, um, 
for things like this. Huh. Wow. Quizzes, radio inputs. Like that's what we should have done, could have done in the survey. If you were to do that, that, that would be great. In fact, I'll probably show you guys how. All right, moving on. Well, it's just like this. <sighs> What's next? Okay. Um, did I do it? Wait, no, I haven't done anything. <laughs> Add an item ID to all of your radio inputs so that you can link them. The first one is going to have an ID of QAA1. Um, and then QAA1, to, oh, geez. Okay, so each input is going to have this. Type radio, and then that's the whole thing. Let me do this. Okay. And equals, it's nice that with IDs, we don't have to remember it's hashtag in our HTML, but it is. And this is answer two, because we're still at question one. Now down here, it's going to be question two. So I'm looking for the input. And the way I'm really being able to tell is because of the awesome color coding. And I can see, oh, type radio. And I know that that's, um, I know that that's where I'm looking for. Can I do it? Yes. All right. I hope you guys did well too. Let's see. Although not required for label elements. La, la, la. Still a be best practice to explicitly link a label with its corresponding. We know that. So label is now going to have the four attribute. Four equals QAQ1. Okay. I should have just done this for attribute that links. Okay, cool. So we'll just do this for all of them. Okay, this guy, control C, control V, A2. Q2. And finally, Q2, Q2. <laughs> that had nothing. No. Q2A2. Thanks. Okay. <sighs> if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at, really? Did I do it? Yes. I did it. Okay. Give it, uh, give the label elements text such that input comes before the text. Right. Yeah. And then give the input elements a value matching the text true or false okay cool so true false uh blah, 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 blah. so all of my inputs after the inputs i put a value right um but then i also have to give it a value so i start here and i'm like value equals um true. But guess what I don't do? I don't capitalize it. I don't capitalize it here. Okay. But I do here. All right. Um, I'm going to do something silly. Not really. It's kind of clever. I'm going to copy this whole thing. You get, I think, you know, one of the things as you keep going, you just try to find shortcuts for stuff. You're like, okay, okay. I know what I got to do. I'm looking for number two. Here it is. Two. And this one is the first one. I think I would lay, I think I would put some notes in here. I think it could really help me. So watch what I do. I actually highlight that and then see, and did you guys like that? All right. And then this one here it is. I'm going to highlight it and then obviously I'm going to change it. Value here is false and false. And do the same thing down here and false. It's really easy to misspell. Um, Got to be super aware of that because most of the errors that my students, you know, our students wind up having is just that they spelled something wrong, you know, so. If you click on the radio inputs, you might notice both inputs within the same true false field set can be selected at the same time. 
Oh, that's so wrong. Group the relevant inputs together such that only one input from a pair can be selected at one time. Oh, how do I do that? I forget. Um, hold on. Group? No. Oh, I forget. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Okay, hold on. Ugh, that's my toy. Actually, I bet I have it in here. Code pen. Do -do 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 -do. Over here, I think this is it. My registration form. Okay. So, let's see. It was under personal account or business account. Create a new password right after this. Label input. Class inline? No. Uh, uh, it's just the field set. Hmm. Does that mean I, I do an extra field set? Group the relevant inputs together. <sighs> this field set. Oh. It's the something about the four ID. It's um not value, it's not name. Is it name? It's name. It's the label, it's the name. Name. They have to have the same name. Mm -hmm. Name. Well, the legend, the legend up here. Class question. Name. This. Oh, I wish they would have shown this up here, right? Don't you just put that in here? Don't you say. Don't you say name? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's right. It's like a quiz for myself. It's like a quiz for me. Like, I feel like I'm being quizzed. <laughs> I feel like I am being quizzed here. And that was rude that they didn't show the field set. You know? All right. All right. Did the loop. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Oh, guys, that's awesome. Okay, to prevent unnecessary repetition, target the before pseudo element, before pseudo element of the P element and give it a content property of question number. Oof. To prevent unnecessary repetition, target the before of the P. Okay, so P targeting before. There's my where's my paragraph? I don't do I even have a paragraph? I don't know. Where's the paragraph? Why do I care? Um, I have no idea. Okay, fine. We're going to prevent unnecessary repetition which are before pseudo element of the P element and give it a content property of question number. P before. It's like the legend. It's very confusing for me. Okay. Um, I don't know what they're doing, but you know what? I think this is what they, they mean here. 
Oh, I can't do an equals. It's always colon. So. It's weird. I. Oh, look at that. That's right. The P elements are what the number one. Wow. Okay. I can see this. I can understand this now. You guys, this is, this is really good HTML to learn. Um, it's a little above just, uh, starting at the basics and I kind of like it. I hope you guys like it too. It's challenging. All right, so the final section of this quiz will contain a drop down in a text box. Begin by nesting as a div with a class of form row and nest four div elements inside of it, alternating their class attributes with question block and answer. Okay. <sighs> Guys, I always do deep breathing. I hope you breathe deeply too. Because sometimes, you know, it just takes it. It takes that form row. And then nest for inside. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Dun, dun, dun. Alternating their class attributes. Okay. I get it. I get it. So div class equals alternating class attributes with question block and answer. So it's basically, wait a second. Oh, question block and answer. Mm, okay, it's close to that, but it's a little different. Okay, so question, oops, quote, question, Block. Let's see. Form row, form row. Okay, so begin by nesting a div. Okay, just, okay, so one div and here's one. So I'm gonna take this command C, enter command B, enter command B, enter command B. Woof, is that right? No. Div, you should nest four div elements inside div. Oh, alternating. Y'all, okay. Hold on. Okay. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Question block. Okay. I did too much. Okay. Within the div question block elements, nest one label element and give the label elements text content. Oh, geez. Wait. Text content? Like, what do you want me to say? That's so annoying. Okay, CSS questions. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. You're, I'm not supposed to say that. Okay, so I want a label element. <laughs> um, Okay, so question and answer, CSS. Um, what are the different display property values? I don't know. Or name three different, oh, how about this? Yeah, name three different display property values. I've been really thinking about that lately. Name three different display property values, period. So, um, it'd be, we got, um, inline, which is 
default for many. Many are inline block and many are block. And then we got flex blocks, we got grid, all sorts of them. Okay. Um, can a, can an inline element uh, be given a width? Mm. A style of width? Oh, there we go. I think that's a good question. Okay. Okay. I didn't have to get that. You know, this is what they're. Are you a front end developer? Do you have any questions? What? This is about CSS. Anyways, okay. Um, within the first div answer element, nest one required select element with three option elements. Okay. Select. Not sure why I decided to type all those. Goodness. One, two, three. Okay. Got it. Right. It has to be void. So the value has to be void for the first one to work so that it knows you can only choose one and it's required because the select is required. Okay, cool. Um, I had to do that and three options. Select an option. And then select an option as the option. Okay. Perfect. And then, so that one's actually should be disabled as well. Oops. Value equals. Okay. Don't be dumb. No. No. Oh my goodness. There we go. Issues. Okay, a value of yes. Whew. Value equals yes. Yes, not yes. Yes. Value equals no. No. Okay. No, I didn't do it right. Okay. You should give the first option element a text content of select an option. <laughs> Guys, it's very particular about spaces. So, you know, actually I shouldn't really have these on separate spaces anyways. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, so let's see what's next. Link the first label to the select element and give the select element. Okay, so link it label. Label four, okay, equals, does it want me to put something in? No, label four. Name equals, name equals, um, let's see, what is this? Uh, developer question, I don't know. Let's try that, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, for developer question? No, it's like, no. Oh, my bad. Okay, so basically, 
it's the same. Okay. There we go. All right. Nest one of the text area, one text area element with the second div answer. So do you have any questions? And set the number of rows and columns it has. Then give the text area placeholder text describing an example answer. Okay, so open up my text area text area okay um place folder oh, I'm going out of order it's not good Something like that. I don't know. Okay. Example answer. What? Whatever. Nest one text area element within the second div answer element and set the number of rows and columns it has. Okay. So rows equals five calls equals 30. Cool. All right. Got it. Okay. So, uh, I have something really quick. If you do not remember how to do that, what would you do? Show you what you would do. You would use W3 schools and you would say W3 schools. I wouldn't even type up here because this sometimes gets annoying. W3 schools, um, text area HTML. Boom. Watch this. Text area tag. And it literally says what it is. Name, rows. Boom, 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 boom. Okay? How cool is that? So cool. All right. Um, W3 schools is so wonderful. And it's like you are learning some hardcore stuff, um, but you're going to forget some of the little things. And so it's always a great place for reference. It's my favorite reference. Um, MDN docs is amazing, but it, it is more higher level and I learn much more from MDN docs. But when I just need a quick, like, Hey, remind me how to do this. Then yeah. Uh, who is Flexbox? <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. So do you have any questions? Who is Flexbox? Like, I don't know that person. All right. Uh, like it's a person. Ah, maybe that could be my hip hop name. Yo, my name is hit is a, oh, I didn't even do anything. My name is Fluxbox. I like the flux. Okay. As with other input and label elements, link the text area. Yeah. To the corresponding and give it a name. So the label doesn't have a name. So I want to say four equals questions and then I'm gonna say text area has a name um name equals questions and ID questions yeah done do not forget to Give your form a submit button with the text send. Dun, 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 dun. So at the very bottom, I'm going to make a button. All right. Uh-oh. I forget the attribute. Mm, I forget the attribute. See, here we go. 
uh w3 schools i always just type it in first um and then like submit button there it is html oh yeah okay input type submit but it's supposed to be a button right or let's see let's see hold on let's go back over here what did the direction say yeah no send oh send okay so send it's like equal submit Is it the action no hold on type type button type submit it's the same input type okay let's try it boom i got it okay let's go now we gotta do some serious oh wait we have to do more semantic <sighs> spin very semantical no i'm just kidding so after the main element so i got the header element and then we got some sections um this is good this this is a very well structured page that's what i want the tribute project to look like um structure wise so we're gonna do a footer and an address footer footer okay after the main element add one footer and nest the address within it um it's like i guess address got its own element because it's so used it's so commonly used you know uh there we go i'm just gonna copy this because it's like if it i don't know i don't understand why it doesn't format automatically or something but it doesn't i'm just copying and pasting let's keep going uh yeah so it doesn't contain does it have to contain a physical geographical it can also be like a like a link so wrap a link around free code camp right yeah because it doesn't know what you're doing so i'm gonna take this command c i'm gonna say a href equals quotation marks paste it and quotation marks uh, and um then okay i wouldn't want the break before the tag at the closing tag okay make sure you close your tag all right, and then I have the break. The break is just making it go to each line, okay? It's the same as kind of pressing enter, um, but actually pressing enter like in a word processor actually creates a new paragraph element if we were thinking about it in terms of HTML, which is interesting. So it would have extra padding or margin, which is what a paragraph has, whereas a break element doesn't actually have any style to it. It just literally goes to the next line based on whatever the user agent style sheet is, like the size of the font and stuff. Back to the styling page. Select the list elements within the navigation bar and give them the following styles. Okay, so the list elements within the navigation. So navigation containing list. Okay, and we're going to give it all this. There we go. So nice that they're not forcing us. No, no, no. Yeah, okay, I'm so sorry, guys. I was like, wait, the LA is not like, a... okay. So list elements are not direct descendants of navigation elements. Navigation is like the grandparent and you can't call it like that. Like there's like a, there's like a path, right? You're like, well, first it started with the navigation. And then came the unordered list. And then finally, the baby list. Um, yeah, super cheesy. Okay, so there we go. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so I could have done that nav. Um, wait, so let me go back really quick. I wanted to show you one thing. Because it said that I could also do... Uh, hold on. So I could also do nav li. All right, so that's all list of elements in the entire, like, it go, it's going to go through the entire thing. So I could do this too, but I can't use that direct descendant because that little, like, 
uh, alligator or arrow brace. <laughs> Call it like an alligator because of math. Um, it's saying the direct descendant. This is saying just anything that is a, okay, let's go in here and look at it. Uh, cause I want to really drive this home to you because I think element selectors are so confusing sometimes. So we have this navigation and it is the, the grandpapa. Okay. And it's, it's child. Okay. So the list's father or mother is the UL. Okay. And then the UL even has a baby and it's got, oh, sweet. Okay. So, you know, four generations. Um, so here though, we have this list and, uh, the nav containing, notice how it has this same like little open, uh, arrow or right facing arrow bracket alligator. And then, um, it's pointing to this one. So, and then it's pointing to this one. So it's like do, 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 stepping down. But if I want to just skip everything and be like, look, everything within this navigation, I want all the list elements here. I do nav space ally. Okay. Boom. Cool. Let's go. All right. On the topic of visual accessibility, contrast between elements is a key factor. For example, the contrast between the text and the background of a heading should be at least 4.5 to 1. Change the font color of all anchor elements within the list elements to something with a contrast ratio of at least 7 to 1. Okay, so right now, um, these anchor elements right here within this list, um, they're, they're bad. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my... Dun, 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 dun. There's a couple things I could do, guys. I can go in here and I have a wave of this page thing, but I'm not going to do that because you don't have it yet. I am going to go to WebAIM Contrast Checker. If you don't have it all, all of a sudden in your history, I do because I go there all the time. Type in WebAIM Contrast Checker. It'll be like the first hit on Google. Boom, Contrast Checker. So here is actually what, um, like, so here I have the foreground. So what's in the What's in the front and what's in the back so right now it's white and blue and the tax is 8.59 to 1. so i want to have this about that because uh here at least 7.1 i don't want to have it like too much more than 7 to 1 not 7.1 sorry 7 to 1 uh ratio um so all the anchor elements within the list so really what i care about is what this background color is uh, let's go up here. So here's my background color. Nope. Here's my background color of the header. So I'm going to take this color and see, and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make this my background color here. Okay. And then press tab and it'll automatically, ah, and see this, this is actually like a normal link, right? So watch what happens. I mean, should I go darker? No, obviously. Okay. I should start going lighter. So from here, if I just start bringing it over, bringing it over, keep going, keep going, keep going. Aha. So here, here's something, right? Um, that would be, you know, that would be a good color. Uh, but you know, what's like the, what's the theme going on? Yellow. Hmm. What if, how could I make it like yellowish? So what happens if I do like, it's like a good yellow. Um, mm, yellow's a rough one, huh? Is this yellow? This is, uh, what's this color? Oh, I remember. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to find out. Oh, see golden. It's like golden rod or something. Okay. I'm going to copy this <laughs> and I'm going to put it back over here and paste it. Yeah. Okay, tab it. There we go. So actually, I could have like I could have this golden rod on the background, which is what we did. But I think that I want to make it a little bit lighter. Okay. So oh, sorry. Darker. Oh, weird, huh? Okay. So let's do this. And this works. Okay. So now I'm gonna copy this. Control C. Command C, go in here, go down here, 
and I'm just going to paste it in here first and then I'm going to say, okay, on the topic of visual accessibility. <sighs> All right. The contrast between the text and the background of a heading should be 4.5. So that's why like a heading is bigger, so it's okay. But then all the anchor elements within the list elements should be, okay, so now we're saying li containing a. So we're saying, okay, so we're saying nav a. Okay. Probably not going to get away with the a. I think they probably want me to do like, oops. I think they probably want me to do a, um, something else, but it's okay. Color. Mm, whoops. Ooh, it looks nice, right? Hmm, doesn't like it. You should use the LI. So all list, list elements containing A. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. LI containing, oops containing a yay okay cool so we'll keep going really quick where am I uh, let's see okay one hour and 30 minutes just kidding <laughs> uh, let's see here go back Okay, um, so I actually have this inherit, which is fine. Okay, well, I liked my yellow. They didn't like my yellow. So that's fine. To make the navigation buttons look more like typical buttons, remove the underline. Yeah, we normally don't have underlines. Although some accessibility would, um, standards, I don't know. That's a, that's a rough one. So, um, but all we have to do is create a new selector containing in the navigation. What? Okay. Sorry. To make the navigation buttons look more, we're going to remove the underline. So text decoration, none. Then we're going to create a new selector targeting. Okay. Okay. So color inherit and I'm going to do text decoration none and then create a new selector targeting the navigation list elements so that when the cursor hovers over them the background color and text color are switched and the cursor becomes a pointer i love that okay um right okay so we've got this Oh, do you see how it says inherit and this color up here is this color? Okay, okay, okay. So all of this got put in there and we weren't looking or we, yeah, we, we did that. Um, okay, so now new element targeting the navigation list elements. Normally I do A. Hmm. Okay, so LI A pseudo class. Okay. Nav LI containing A's hover. Okay, so it's a pseudo class, it's a hover pseudo class, the background color and the text are switched. The cursor becomes a pointer. Mm. Display pointer. Oh, just kidding. Cursor. It's cursor. Cursor pointer. It's then background color is now this. Mm, and the color itself is dun, 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 
background, background color. Okay. Cool. Take this. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see if it works. It doesn't work. Hold on. Um. Let's see if it's less hover. Oh, no. But I don't want it. Okay, hold on. Navigation list element. So, nav. There we go. It was like making all of this. Did you see that? Okay, now it works. Yay. I love it. Okay, so got that, got that, got that. All right. So that's fun. So the hover thing is super fun and you can have so much fun with it. There's so many different CSS properties. You could do like transitions. You could make it brighter. You could make it darker. You could, you know, um, have it like just imagine anything that you can code onto text. You can do it where it happens when it hovers. Like it's pretty rad. So we're going to tidy up the header by using Flexbox. Who is Flexbox? Just kidding. Um, to put space between the children and vertically center them. That's right. Okay. Whew. Then fix header to the top of the viewport. Woo. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Display flex. Guys, I'm going to use my flex. Cheat. Have flex. Cheating. Flex flex CSS. <laughs> CSS tricks. Yeah. Give me that. Here it is. I love it. CSS tricks. Flexbox. Like I should have this somewhere on my site, but I'm, I'm so dependent upon like Google. What would happen? What would happen if it wasn't there anymore? I don't know. But okay. This complete guide to Flexbox is amazing. And so, um, okay. Put space between the children. Yeah. You have children. Do you have children? Because if you have children, here's the properties for the flex items. Okay. So order. We have order. Um, flex grow. No. Flex shrink. No. Flex basis. That's default size. Flex. Flex grow. Flex shrink. Hold on. Wait, space between. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Justify content. Right. Okay. Justify content. It's always that. Justify content. Space between. Let's see what's happening here. Nothing, nothing yet. It didn't really do anything. Uh-huh. Okay. Next. Hmm. It's not really doing anything. But I think this is it. I think this is space between. Hmm. Hmm. That's problematic. Okay. 50% uh, space between. Vertically center them. So middle or items align items middle or center center center. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's still off a little bit over here. Okay, next, and then it's telling me. Um, position, position. Oh, not flexed, well, fixed. Yeah. So see what happens when it's fixed. I love that. 
I like fixed headers. Uh, it's a thing. Did I do it? No. It's like, no, you're not right. Oh, a top of zero. No, that's right. Okay, I know. I should know that. Top is zero. Um, so, okay, so I don't know what that is. I, if I'm confused, W3A schools. Um, fixed header. Top zero, 100%, we already have that. So here it is, overflow hidden. Do we have overflow hidden? I feel like we name it, use overflow hidden. We did that for um, the, did that for something else. We did that for the accessibility thing, the hiding. So yeah, I'm gonna have to give this to you guys. It's awesome. All right, next. Okay, finally, when the screen is too small, it doesn't wrap, I noticed that. I was playing with that. Did you see that? Oh, it does wrap. Mm. It's, yeah, it's not doing it right. It needs to center. Okay, so align the text. Yeah, for center. Okay, so text align center. And then let's do that. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. But it needs padding. Oh. Mm. Need some padding. Um, and then give main padding such that student info section can fully be seen. Oh, yeah. So we actually kind of want to make the padding the same height as the header with just 50, 50 pixels. So um, because, right, we want to push it down. And so we want its top margin. Um, yeah. You know, Hopefully this makes it so that the anchors are going to work because because I with a fixed header I've had a lot of problems with anchors in the past so um, let's see padding top is 50 pixels yeah that's better okay good let's see what happens when I press info yeah, it's yeah. nice. Okay, so that fixed it. Good. Okay, so the anchors work still. Um, because I gave the parent element some padding, so it affected the rest. That makes a lot of sense. I did not do that previously. Mm, the last time I had to do that. On small screens, the unordered list overflows to the right of the screen. Yeah, we hate that. Okay, the unordered list, so like, what? Oh, is that it? Yikes. Oh, this one, this one, this on our list. So we got to make a hamburger menu. Is that what we're going to do? No. Okay. So fix this by using Flexbox to wrap the UL content. Okay. So. Wrapping the UL content. Then set the following CSS properties. So display fux. Okay. So it's gonna wind up making it bigger. Okay, so let's do this. So align item center. What happens? No, that is not right. Hold on, hold on. Is that right? That is not right. Hold on. I didn't do it right because I have to wrap it. Fix this by using Flexbox to wrap the UL content. Then set the following to correctly align the text. So do I do it with nav? Hold on. Hmm. Nav. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Hello. 
play flex. Is this it? Hold on. Um, no, that is not it. Okay. What is it saying? Fix this by using Flexbox to wrap the UL content. Wrap the UL wrap. Wrap. Okay, wrap. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, wrap. Wrap or no wrap? Okay, that's right. Flex wrap. Sorry. Okay. Um, I could have looked at the uh, cheat sheet thing. Whatever that may be. Eh, whatever. Okay, I could have looked at that to figure that one out. <sighs> okay, here we go. So, flex wrap. Flex wrap wrap. Yeah. Okay, now don't put display flex twice. Okay, now I think I understand what it's saying. But I'm gonna test it. Look, I'm gonna test it before I check the code. I should have been doing this the whole time, guys. There you go. And now it'll have to be like, okay, fix it. Yay, I did it. Okay. Um I should be able to know whether or not it worked or not. That's a hard one, but yeah. Set the width of the section elements to 80% of their parent container. Okay, the section. Okay. And then use the margins. Cool. Width. What are their parent containers? Mar uh, main. Okay. And then let's see, main doesn't have a, yeah, doesn't really have anything. Um, and then use margins to center the section elements, adding 10 pixels to the bottom margin. Okay. Margin. Uh oh, oh, okay. And then, oh, there we go. That's right. 80% of it stay on the left. I was confusing myself. So it just scooted things over a little bit like over here that was why I was a little confused and then now I'm gonna add 10 pixels to the bottom margin margin bottom why does it not matter that I use multiple margins I could just use as many margins as I want even though this is margin all the way around auto I could still do this margin bottom as well and what that's doing is giving some sections uh, some space, right? Okay, good. And then make sure that it can't be larger than 600 pixels because look at how crazy it gets. That's ah, too big. We want to keep it nice and in a nice column because that's actually an accessibility thing. A max width um, is 600 pixels is great because there's a certain number of characters that are the best. Oh no. Sorry. You should give the section a margin top of zero. Well, you didn't tell me that. No, sorry. <laughs> okay, adding zero <laughs> pixels. Fine. Okay, let's do zero auto zero ten pixels. And get rid of this. The nerve. Oh, wait. No. Auto, auto. Auto. 10 pixels. So annoying. Okay, so margin zero, auto, 10 pixels, auto. I have to use all four values or I could have done, you know, the margin top zero, margin right, margin left, auto, auto. So yeah, having the four values was much easier in this situation. Yay. All right. Now it says to have a border bottom. Oh, that border bottom. All right. Replace the top margin of the H2 elements with 60%, I mean, pixels of top padding. What? Doesn't that sound weird? Uh, replace the top margin of the H2 elements. Replace it. Top margin. Okay. If it's telling me to replace the top margin, I'm going to say margin top zero. Okay. And then I'm going to say instead I want padding. Padding top. 
and I want it to be 60 pixels. Okay, is that right? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. All right, so if they wanted to scoot it down a little bit, white space. This is white space, guys. White space is good. I think a lot of people, like, okay, so we imagine resumes. Resumes were like, you should not do more than one page, right, of a resume. Well, websites are not the same. Scroll away, scroll away. It's just scrolling. It doesn't matter how long it is. Next, add padding to the top and left of the info elements and set the other values to zero. Info, okay, elements, dot info. Notice that's, that's the class selector. So I'm doing a class selector. I don't need to do anything else. It's just a class selector. <sighs> padding to the top. Padding, I want to start at the top. So I go padding and I want add the padding to the top and left. So top, first value, 10 pixels. Top, right, zero. Bottom, zero. Left, 10 pixels. Boom. It's always uh, padding. Top, right, bottom, left. Okay, like a, like a um, clock. So close, I'm at 78%. <sighs> Yay, okay. Give the form row elements top margin and left right padding and the other values should be zero. Then increase the font size for all input elements. Okay, cool. Form, row, oh, now I'm on a roll here, right? Top margin, margin, top. Give them a top margin. 10 pixels. Okay, and then, okay, left and right padding. So, since I want like two values, okay, so left and right padding um, is the second value. So the first value is zero, and then the second value is pixels. What is this for? One row down here? Why do I feel like this is not working? Huh. And then, is it form row down here or is it up here? Hmm. I don't feel like it's doing anything, but okay. Margin top. Okay. Mm, now increase the font size for all input. Input. Increase the font size 1.2. Okay. 1.125 EM. That's increasing. What? Oh, well, <laughs> just putting, I had like thought font size, but didn't let me do it. Greater than 13 pixels. It is greater than 13. Technically, y'all, 1.125 EMs is greater, but whatever. Let's see, 25. That is so stupid. Let's do um, 15 pixels, just... I wouldn't use pixels. Jeez, I wouldn't use pixels for my font font size. You guys should like you can do some work on that. It doesn't really matter that much. All right, to make the first section look more in line, target only the input elements with info elements. Woo! Input with info. <laughs> Set their width to fifty percent and left align their text. To make the first section look more in line, target only the input with the info. All right, only the input with the info. Input dot info. Okay, and that's my target, that's my combinator. Width to 50%. Text align left. Within, guys, there are no input. 
input.info would mean that there are input uh, elements that have info as a selector. Let's go in here real quick and I want to see. So where's my info? Here it is. Like here's an info. It's not attached to my inputs. So that's, that's my problem that I'm, I can't do that obviously. Or I mean, you maybe not obviously, but for me, it's like, duh. okay, so we've got this div class info. Now it is the grandparent of the input. So I want to do info space input. There we go. Got it right here. Cool. Got it. Obviously these are going to need to align properly. Target all label. There we go. 10% and make sure they do not take up less than 55 pixels. Okay. So now dot info and label and I'm going to make sure their width. Oh, they're just going to be tiny. 10% but min width because like it can get weird is going to be 55 pixels. This is probably like the only time where I would want um right like where I would want um the min width okay but hold on so I don't understand so are my labels block hmm labels are in line so I was talking about this yeah like labels are in line so I'm not understanding how you can put a width on the label. Maybe they're tricking us. Let's see. Okay. There it is. I'm like, hold on guys. That's a problem. To align the input boxes with each other, create a new rule set that targets all input and label elements within an info element and set the display property to inline block. Also, align the label elements text to the right. Okay, woo, info, input, label. So I think I could do that, right? Info, input, comma, label. Yeah. Or do I have to do, hmm, let me try it like this, but I might have to put the dot info there too. Let me try it. Display. I'm so glad that they heard me. I'm like, oh yeah, we got to do that inline block. Just kidding. Just good design practice, right? Um, isn't it fun that you guys get to do this with me for the first time? Amazing. All right. And then display inline block. Also aligned label elements text. So should I go here or just put it there? I think I should go down here. Text line left. I feel like there's gonna I feel like I'm gonna be wrong. Yeah, I was wrong. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, okay, okay. I did have to do this. Okay, sorry, my bad. I thought maybe I could do that. I feel like I've tried that multiple times. I still every time I'm wrong um so there we go so I put them on separate lines when you start listing like multiple multiple properties so that it's easier to see um, it also is like now you should give the label element a text line right oh shoot yeah okay there we go oh there we go now it's lining up nice that's better perfect Great. Okay. To neaten the question block elements at the following CSS properties. Okay. Do, 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 do. So we just do dot question block because it's everything inside, not just certain, um, not just certain elements inside. So just everything. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. Great. Um, at this point, that's funny. I'm like not even looking at it, but look at how <laughs> the question block was good. We wanted this. This is nasty, right? I don't know. I don't like it. Make the paragraph elements appear as a higher priority. 
higher priority. Oh, the paragraph elements up here as a higher priority. Okay, so all paragraphs are going to look like they're more important than they really are. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Um, so some, hmm, some people might say, if it's like question two, does that mean it should be an H3? I don't know. Probably not. Um, but hmm, I guess it's debatable. Maybe people would do like, oh, okay, this is H3 now. A subsection but um, I don't know there we go it's bigger 20 pixels padding left it's looking good looking good all right let's go it is useful to see the default border around the fields of elements during development however it's ugly after oh, I'm just kidding <laughs> dot question we also I'm waiting for this list type to go away to say none we're going to get there. I know we're going to get there. Um, what am I doing? Oh, border and bottom padding. Sorry, border, none, and padding, bottom. Doesn't sound as cool as border, bottom. Border, bottom. Uh, bottom, or, yeah. Okay, uh, zero. Y'all, I know it's getting rough in my mind right now. I'm just like on autopilot and you know, the mind is a weird place sometimes. Field set. Okay, remove the bottom border. Oh, I already did it. Okay, sorry. Um, the field sets were called a question, so there we go, it's gone. Love it. Moving on. Yay. Did it. Remove the default styling for the list the items of the answer list. There it is. All right. Dot answers list mm. this is different so I know okay I know that padding zero okay and I know that list style type is none no, okay, okay, list style, I did. Okay, they don't do list style type, apparently that's like old school. Okay, this must be updated list style. Okay, good. Maybe it's like the condensed version. Normally I do list style type, that's fine, list style. Okay, so now we're gonna do, we're gonna make the submit button. Okay, so it's gonna have a block, so it'll be like, not inline anymore. For some reason, a uh, submit button is inline. Buttons are inline properties, or inline elements as default. Um, and then, actually that could be kind of cool because you can have multiple buttons in a row um, and it's easier. You could have just given them the display property of inline, but whatever. Give the submit button. So the submit button has a hashtag submit. I think. Is that right? Let's see. Go to my index. Should. If it doesn't, it's weird. How about we how about we do this guys? How about we do the attribute selector? Because we haven't, and then it'll be fun. Button uh brackets. Type equals submit. Yeah, let's see. I like this. Um, I think this is cool. I think I think using. I feel like I've said this before, but using attribute type selectors um, is a really good skill to have because when you are an actual web designer, especially if you're a designer, you're gonna work with WordPress no matter what matter if you want to or not you're gonna work with WordPress and so WordPress you don't often have access to the HTML or the HTML is like hard it's hard to edit but what you can edit is the CSS and you can add extra styles that will then replace the previous style so you can have your own style sheet well 
You can always, remember I've showed you the developer tools, you can always figure out what the HTML on the page is. And so if you can figure out what the HTML is and maybe it has a specific attribute, then you can use these attribute selectors, CSS selectors to change stuff on a page that you normally wouldn't because you can't figure out how to change the HTML. Okay, very cool. It also makes it so you don't mess up the structure as much. <laughs> I mean, you can mess up structure with CSS, don't get me wrong, but um, HTML, you kind of, you, you want to kind of lock it in a little bit, okay? That's why we're waiting until the very last part to do all this CSS. All right, so we're giving it some just style. Copy and paste that. Yeah, nice. Okay, cool. So is this nice? I want it to have a cursor like, oh, yeah. Okay, all these are required. Okay, so I want it to have a cursor. Not sure why it doesn't. My code doesn't pass. That's so rude. Oh, uh, fine. Okay, so it didn't like my type selector. I mean, my attribute selector. Fine. It's fine. There we go. If I use button, look, guys, if I use the button as my element selector, type selector, not the attribute, I did that. Okay, so if I use it, then that means that every single button on my page, you know, is going to have this style. Maybe I don't want all my buttons to have that style, but that's okay. Move it on. Uh, set the footer, background color, footer, background color, giving it, they, we always have the background color a different color for footer and it's hashtag 2a 2a 40 okay this and we're gonna do use flexbox to horizontally center the text okay so display you see that like making a flex it gives you this center alignment um another cool thing. Um, doing the display flex, it gives you a center alignment, which is really nice. So align, so align items. Wait, horizontally center the text. Use a flex item to horizontally center the text. Hold on. I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. Right. Justify content. Okay. Align items is vertical. Justify content is horizontal. I could have looked that up. My bad. Now we can't read the text. Oh, geez, God, that's bad. Um, so target the footer and the anchor element within it to set the font color to a color of adequate contrast ratio. Okay, so footer with anchor. Well, it's in address. Okay, footer anchor. Um. color looks good to me I'm just gonna take this thing okay okay I took a color from up top that was light there you go cool um it looks nice that it's the background Whoops. Okay. 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 Footer A. You should use the footer. Footer A selector. Hmm. So it's selecting the footer. What? That, guys, no. Mm -mm. I think they're, I don't understand. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. Oh, 
target the footer and oh guys look at this and i didn't see the and footer comma footer a i get it now okay Whew, my bad horizontally center all the text within the address element and add some padding okay sorry okay address a d d r e s s text align center padding five pixels sure great i did it okay clicking on the navigation link should jump to the viewport however this jumping can be disorienting true Oh, okay, this is cool. So select all elements, which is a boom, universal selector, all elements, scroll, behavior. How cool is that? Like we should just always have that. I don't know why, who doesn't want smooth, right? Uh, well, I guess it is smoother, huh? Hmm. Okay, go. Um, it doesn't seem like super smooth, but okay, within wrap the style rule that sets that within a media rule, oof, with the media feature produce, oh gosh, this is, um, so media queries can be used for people that have uh, disabilities and they know about setting their browser tools to work with them. I, I really wonder about this. I need to, it's like, I want to go do like, I want to go do like a. Uh, um, I want to, I want to find out from people who are disabled, like how many people actually change their browser, uh, settings and how did they learn how to change their browser settings? Like, where did they learn that certain types of motion based animations can cause discomfort for some users in particular people with vestibular disorders have sensitivity to certain motion triggers. Okay. This guys, it's a real deal. And, um, so we had this like one presentation software called Prezi. I don't know if you've ever used it, but it like flew in and out and it was really cool for a lot of people, but definitely it made some people actually queasy. All right. So the at media at rule, right, has a media feature called prefers reduce motions to set the CSS based on the user's preferences. So it's in the browser. It could take one of the following values, reduce, no preference. So... Does it make any sense to have no preference set as the value? Okay, so we're wrapping the selector. So we're wrapping the universal selector. Okay, now the at, uh, the media, the feature. So the feature is scroll behavior. No, 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 no. Scroll behavior smooth is a CSS property which goes, which we don't type again. My bad. Oh, okay. So then this, um, so media screens are interesting because you, you know, you're wrapping the whole selector in another selector. So this is wrong here. Okay. So it's like dink, dink. Yeah, there we go. Okay. You can um, put this on a new line if that helps. I don't know if that helps. Uh, but yeah, you wanna make sure that there's two curly braces, two curly braces, okay? And these are the selectors. You can do multiple selectors. We're getting into, this is, these media uh, queries is what they're called. And it makes it so that you can um, just all sorts of stuff, like change this when the screen size is this, or when this user preference is this. User preference is a accessibility thing. So the feature is prefer, okay, prefers So when it has no preference, we do, we do that. 
Interesting. So it's it's interesting because it's saying that if there's no preference, you you do scroll behavior smooth. Um, so it's interesting because if it's like, well, if they if they said yes, what would happen? You know, um, and I guess maybe it's the user agent style sheet would decide what the scroll behavior is because it was, you know, it's a preference in the browser. So, okay. All right. Good. Um, preference in the browser. So reduce would be like a, would be a setting in the browser. We should look at those. We should, we should try to find um, those and, and see what they're like. That would be good. All right. Uh, so finally, the navigation accessibility can be improved by providing keyboard shortcuts. The access key attribute accepts a space a separated list of access keys. Ooh, like when you press enter, right? Uh, enter on a screen is, is something that they have to program in in HTML and CSS. So um, access key attribute accepts a space separated list of access keys. S. Oh, so the access key would be S and it would submit the submit it. Give each of the navigation links a single letter access key. It's not always advised to use access keys, but they can be useful. I mean, what if you're typing in? Yeah. Okay. So um, access key, does it mean that you would press like control S or I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So we're going to do navigation links a single access key Ac access key equals student or let's do info I okay I don't know I guess it doesn't mean it doesn't matter but whatever info um this is H sure. And then this one I'm going to have is C, which again, doesn't, I don't know, C would be weird to me because we have control C and all of that. Yeah, I don't think I'd do it. Guys, I did it. You did it. We did it. That's awesome. Um, this was a super long video and um, it wasn't as many steps, I don't think, as normal. Um, interestingly enough, let's see, how many lines of code did we do? 121. Good job. How many lines of CSS? Let's see. Uh, which is longer? CSS will always be longer, probably. 185. That makes sense. Um, it'd be, it, it's abnormal if the uh, HTML is longer than the CSS. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Please reach out if you have any questions.